Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is a video to show you how to install Seagate's Firecuda 520 M2 PCA Gen 4 NVMe SSD. This is a blazingly fast NVMe drive that can get you up to 5,000 megabytes per second in terms of read write speeds if you have the right equipment. Now, this will work with AMD's newest motherboard setups so as they support PCIe Gen 4, and that will give you the best speeds. However, it is backwards compatible, so it will work with PCIe 3, and it will still give you pretty fast speeds. And I did a separate video on this to show the speeds it can get up to. But this video is to show you how to install this NVMe SSD. And I've done a couple of videos in the past on this from other manufacturers, and they're remarkably easy to install and joyful in that way because basically it's a plug and play affair you just need a little screw which isn't included in the box and it's worth knowing that usually you get the screws with your motherboard but if you don't don't worry because you can buy them on Amazon so I'll link to Amazon where you can purchase M2 screws that you'll need to screw these into your motherboard if you don't have any and the setup otherwise is very simple as a basic affair most modern motherboards will have slots for up to three NVMe M2 drives on them and laptops generally also have at least one or two slots on them especially gaming laptops here you can see I've already got two WD Black SN750s installed and the slot you're looking for is the ones marked M2 on the motherboard you can see it says M2 PCIe and then it slots in one way like that and just clips in ever so gently you don't need to force it in it just pushes in gently and then you just set it down and screw it in. It's worth noting that I am using an anti-static mat while installing this to prevent me ruining any peripherals and I would recommend that. I'll link to that in the description as well. But there you can see, then you just screw the M2 screw into it to hold it in place and it's installed. And now the NVMe drive is basically ready to go. There are some setup that you need to do within Windows and I'll show you that a bit later on. But as you can see, there's no need for power cables or anything like that. And it just plugs in nice and easily. Now, another option is you can get these cards which plug into your PCIe slot instead of an M2 slot. And they're basically expander cards, an adapter that you can plug in, like you would a graphics card into the PCIe X16 slot on your motherboard. And you can then set these cards up with another drive and pop them in so if you've only got one NVMe slot on your motherboard don't worry you could still add more storage if you so want to so the process here is the same sort of thing it's basically a little card where you then plug in the NVMe drive into it slot it in and screw it down and then once you've got that installed you then just need to slot it into your motherboard now these cards are actually very cheap to buy as well so they're a nice little option to expand your storage if you have the room obviously if you're SLI graphics cards then that might be an issue you won't have enough space but the setup is basically the same because you're plugging it straight into your motherboard this one also doesn't require any power so it's just a simple case of plugging that drive in another angle for you to show how simple it is it just clips in there and then you can screw it down with that little screw as I said I'll link to the screws that you can purchase you can see they are very tiny so they're easy to lose so it's worth having extras but also you will find those generally in your motherboard box. So if you've just bought a motherboard recently, make sure you hang on to those M2 screws for the future if you ever want to upgrade and add more storage to your PC. So that's another way of doing it. These are very affordable and they're really easy to slot in. Just plug into your motherboard, screw into the case and job done. Again, I'll show you how to scan for those drives once you've installed it and then you can get them running in Windows. And you can run your machine off just this card. If this is your first time building, you can do it. Another option is you can get various different M2 expander cards. This is one from MSI that came with my motherboard. And MSI sell a number of them that go with their top-end motherboards. But you can buy these sorts of things separately. You can either find them as RAID cards where you can install up to four NVMe drives in RAID. And I'm not going to talk to you about RAID a bit more at the moment because that's a bit more complicated. But if you simply want to install several different drives in your machine without too much fuss but you don't have multiple NVMe slots 
on your motherboard, then this is a way of doing it. For reference, my MSI motherboard has three NVMe slots on it, but I actually ended up with more M2 NVMe drives available and I wanted to install more. This expander card that comes with my motherboard allows me to install up to four more, so you can have seven total, which is just insane. Bearing in mind that you usually can get around a terabyte or two terabytes in terms of NVMe storage, you can really get a lot of storage, really fast storage on your PC without much fuss. As you can see, this card though is a bit chunkier than usual. It's a bit shorter than usual graphics cards, but it's about the same width, so it takes up quite a bit of room. But you can see here, once you've taken that cover off, you've got this heatsink backing on it, and it has a fan system as well. But the process for installation, again, is fairly straightforward. Basically, there's a little riser screw at the back there. You need to slot that into the right place, because you will note there are three holes in there, essentially. You could get different sized cards that you can put in here. Usually they're about the same size. You can see I've already got three different cards in there. I've got a Samsung 970 Evo and another two WD Black SN750s without the heatsink installed on there. And then the fourth slot I'm going to use is Firecuda 520, so you can put that in there. Obviously then you have access to loads of different storage uh, fast speeds. And again, this is the same sort of process. This one does require power, this drive, because it has that fan to keep things cool. However, the process is fairly straightforward and the power for it is also simple. Again, it just plugs into a spare X16 PCIe slot in the same way a graphics card would on your machine and you just plug that in, put in the power, go into Windows, make sure the drives are selected and working, and sign them a drive letter and you're away. So the process is pretty simple and straightforward and similar one. These expander cards available from a number of different manufacturers. Zeus does one that's a RAID one, but you can also get cards from various other places. And it's a great way to add loads of extra really fast storage to your PC. And again, the cards don't need powering in this one, it's only the expander that needs powering for the fan, so it's not too much of a hassle. Now once that's all done, obviously you need to find a spot for your card to go into the PC. Now in this case you can use the top one for your graphics card, you should always do that because that gives you the most lanes and the best speeds, but then you find another one a bit lower down has got enough room to slot this into, and that just slots in the same way as a GPU would, so it clips in there and then obviously held down with the thumb screws and plugged in with power to make sure that, that fan spins and keeps it running cool. Dead simple, and if you've been wondering what that little card is in my machine, now you know. Now, once you get to go into Windows, it's worth checking your BIOS settings first to make sure that you haven't got any random settings in your BIOS in terms of the M2 drives. For example, I had a RAID one set up for Intel um, that was designed for Intel's Optane drives that was then preventing Windows from recognizing the Firecuda when I first plugged it in. So go into your BIOS settings and check that out and be sure. But as standard, you'll probably find that the drive's immediately recognized. However, you might find it's not in my computer. So if you open up your computer to see all the different folders in the Explorer, you might see the drive isn't there. So what you do is you click on Manage on the top under your computer settings, and then you'll find a computer management thing pop up. Under Disk Management, you'll see there you'll open that up, and then it will usually say a new drive has been found. And you'll see here it's unallocated as Disk 1. Click on that and click on New Simple Volume. And what we're doing here is basically telling the PC that this is a new drive. We're going to give it a letter. In this case, I'm going to use L to let the PC know what I want it mapped as. And then once you've done that, you're essentially giving it a really quick format to wipe it, although it is going to be blank anyway, but you're basically letting the PC know that it's available to use. And you do that, it takes a few seconds, and then it then should appear. You'll see it pops up open there, but it's also now available in my Explorer. And you can see here, you've got the drive available. Another point of note is that when you're in that disk management zone, if you click on the drive with a right click and then click on properties, you can then go into it and you'll see under the details tab the name of the drive. So if you're unsure when you're going through disk management, let's say you're installing multiple drives and you're not sure which one's which, you right click on it and you go into details, you'll see what the name of the drive is and what sort of drive it is. Hope you found this video useful. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions. Be sure to check out the description for the links 
of everything you need. Thanks for watching. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Hope you found it useful, interesting, hilarious, or all of the above. Be sure to check out the description for other information you might find interesting, and subscribe and watch these other videos as well that I think might be useful to you. And have a great life.